Hello, this is Hudson Institute, and we are discussing recent international security events with Richard Weitz, Hudson Institute's director of the Center for Political Military Analysis. Dr. Weitz, why is Russia, as well as China, resisting the imposition of UN sanctions on North Korea following its illegal missile test? Russia, as well as China, the United States, and other countries do not want North Korea to have nuclear weapons or ballistic, long-range ballistic missiles. However, while the, the, the difference between Russia and China and, and, and the United States is that for the first two countries, they want to see a change in the behavior of the North Korean regime rather than a change in the regime itself. Whereas for the United States, Japan, and other countries, they would probably, if they could, like to see a change in the regime. Uh, for this reason, Russia and China are resisting sanctions in the UN that could lead to what they fear most, which would be a collapse of the, the North Korean government. Uh, their fear is that with the, with the regime change, uh, you might see economic chaos, flows of refugees, and an elimination of a convenient buffer zone which separates their territories from that of the, the U.S. Army based in South Korea, which if North Korea were to, to collapse, would probably have to move northward for humanitarian reasons alone. How would you assess the April 1st meeting between the American and Russian presidents in London? The uh, two, I would, there were two main uh, declarations that the presidents Medvedev and Obama uh, issued, which I think are important. The first one was a declaration of general principles to govern Russian-American relations in coming years. And it talked about how they could cooperate on a range of international security and economic issues. The second declaration was a statement to the effect that the two governments are committed to pursuing a reduction in their nucle offensive nuclear arms in coming years. Particularly, they said they would try and seek a new arms control treaty by the end of this year. That's important not because of the numbers which are being discussed, which are relatively high, perhaps 1,500 warheads, but because an existing arms control treaty, the START Treaty, will expire at the end of this year. And that treaty contains some very important verification uh, measures. These include data exchanges, on-site inspections, and other measures which allow the two parties to, feel, uh, to ensure that the other is complying with the treaty and so they don't fear cheating. And just how easy will it be to reach an agreement? Uh, th there are several b impediments that could make it difficult to reach an agreement by the end of this year. Uh, first is the timeline. In order for the U.S. Senate to have time to deliberate and review the treaty, they would have to agree to a text probably by early fall. So the expectation is they want to sign something by July. However, they also differ over certain technical issues related to the treaty. For example, the Russian government would like to count, have limitations on both warheads and on the delivery vehicles which can carry the warheads, particularly ballistic missiles, whereas the American government wants to focus on a warhead limit alone for the first treaty just because it would make it easier to, to negotiate. In addition, there is a concern over how, what warheads might be counted. Uh, the current uh, practice is to count operationally deployed warheads. Those are warheads which are already on a bomber or a missile or could be quickly loaded onto one. And that excludes warheads which are in reserve, under repair, or otherwise not in the active arsenal. And the Russians have been concerned that there's a large number of American warheads in this status which could be quickly, in their view, reloaded onto U.S. offensive systems. And that would allow the United States to break out of the treaty. There's also uh, some differences over what limitations you want to carry over from past treaties regarding particular modernizations of weapons and so on. But even beyond that, there's a larger problem in that in the past, efforts to reach the Russian, American, and Soviet American arms control agreements have often been derailed by developments unrelated to the treaty. For example, uh, the American con Senate refused to ratify an earlier arms control treaty in 1979 after the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. In addition, the Russian Duma refused to ratify the START II treaty uh, after the R NATO enlarged and then engaged in a war in Yugoslavia, which R Russia protested. 
And one could think of a series of issues which could reemerge and block agreements. These include differences over ballistic missile defense, over how to deal with Iran, how to deal with Korea, uh, and other political military issues. So both presidents and their governments are going to have a, a major task before them if they hope to reach an agreement by the end of this year. Thank you, Dr. Weitz.